Hello everyone, this is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. I want to demonstrate the process flow for creating a conventional crown in the Blue Sky Plan software. I'm using version 4.82 of the Blue Sky Plan software. If you're using an older version, then please update and download this version from the Blue Sky Bio website. I'm going to start the process flow by clicking on crown and bridge and selecting conventional crown as that is what we will be demonstrating in this tutorial video. The directory for our computer appears on the screen. We have the shortcut buttons going across the top for desktop documents and downloads. We have a fantastic ad for a complete aligner packages on the right hand side. Packages start at $4.99, including planning and manufacturing. But for our purposes, we're going to navigate to the folder containing the relevant STL files. We're going to left click on the first file. We could see a preview on the right hand side of the screen. And after left clicking on the first file, I'm holding down my shift key and left clicking on any additional files to multi-select. The software automatically opens the model alignment screen. We see the relevant STL file previews on our screen. We're going to left click to select with a blue frame the upper jaw since we're planning a crown for the upper jaw. Going to select the draw type on the right side, maxilla, and partial since that is what we were dealing with right now. I'm going to click continue to alignment to proceed. In order to properly align the model in 3D space, I'm going to mark three dots as indicated in the image on the top right. The first dot is going to be on the lingual side of a molar cusp. The second dot is going to be as interior as possible. And the third dot is on a cusp opposing the first dot. And for each dot, what I did is I held down the shift key and I left click with my mouse button. The software has now aligned the model in space. It corresponds properly to the head on the bottom left. We see the grid on the screen, which we could toggle on and off, and then we click continue. On this step, we could modify the exact placement, the exact placement and alignment of the model if needed using the widget and using the arrows. I'm able to grab with my left mouse button and rotate in space. I could toggle on and off the grid as well as the widget. And I could also choose to show all the models that I'm importing at the same time, or just showing the individual model. Once I have confirmed the model alignment, click on finish. And we now have the relevant surfaces and models imported into the software aligned properly. Before we proceed to actual crown design, in this step I'm able to modify the models in a variety of different ways. For example, if I want to close a particular model, I could select the model from the drop down list, select draw type mandible, and I could choose to either close the model or I could close it by creating a hollow model in order to save print time and printing material. I also have the ability to add artic articulation pins if I want to print and preserve the spacing of the models in relation to each other. I could go ahead and add articulation pins. I'm not going to do that now for the purpose of the video, but you should know that it exists. Once I have the models as I would like them, my, our new model now appears in the surfaces list. Once I have the models as I would like them, I could go ahead and click on continue to crown design. Our restoration type is of course conventional crown. So we have conventional crown selected from the drop down menu. We are creating a crown for the maxilla. We're going to select the re relevant models. Our model is the upper jaw. The opposing arch is our lower jaw. Now we could start, or it's actually recommended to go through the process without placing initially a virtual tooth. If we're gonna be creating multiple crowns and we wanna make sure the placement of multiple virtual teeth is exact and precise, we could go ahead and do that ahead of time before we start this process by using the add tooth button that we have up here. For this purpose of the video, we're going to show the process of adding and designing and creating the crown during the process flow. So we're not going to select a crown. We haven't placed a crown yet on screen, but we're going to click the start button. The first step is to define the margin line. So I'm rotating with my left mouse button simply by grabbing and dragging. I'm zooming in with my right mouse button and moving my mouse backwards and forwards. And once I'm ready to start drawing the margin line, I hold down the shift key and I place dots with my left mouse button 
The software, of course, connects those dots. We'll be able to edit and modify the placement after we finish drawing the margin line. So if it's not as perfect as you would like it to be, don't worry. Go ahead and place those dots going all the way around until we return to the start point. And for the last dot, we're going to click and we're just going to drag it to the starting point until it connects like this. Now I've drawn the margin line. If I want to modify the margin line at all in the area that I want to make the modification, I hold down the shift key, left mouse button, and just grab and drag to draw the modified margin line and the software updates automatically. If for whatever reason you want to clear the margin curve that you started drawing, just click clear margin and restart the process. Once you have the margin line drawn and created, simply click the next button to proceed to step number two. Step number two is to define the path of insertion. We could do this either by, by manipulating the arrow on the screen or by rotating the view and then clicking set insertion direction from view. We also have the slider of maximum allowable undercuts. We could leave it as is at zero if you want to remove undercuts completely. If you want to allow a certain element of undercuts, just grab and slide the slider, and that amount of undercuts will be preserved and allowed by the software. We could see an indication by the software of the area that where the undercuts are going to be blocked out. Once we're happy with the path of insertion, we go ahead and click on next. Let me just jump in and say, as always, with the videos that I create, I'm demonstrating the functionality of the software. But of course, in terms of clinical considerations, you should rely on videos or information provided by clinicians or by the design experts. Okay, in step number three of six of the process flow, we're going to define the proximal area. Now, this is done in order to have the software automatically resize or size the virtual tooth that's going to be placed and converted into a crown automatically. If you don't want this done, then you could just not indicate the proximal area on the adjacent teeth. If there's only one adjacent tooth, then just mark the one adjacent tooth. I mark the teeth simply by shift, left mouse button, and grabbing and dragging. If I want to erase an indication, very simple. Simply, instead of shift, use the control and left mouse button. So shift marks and control erases. Once we've done this, go ahead and click on next. Step number four of the process, we're designing the base of the crown. The large red area is indicating a minimal thickness violation, which is understandable at this point since we haven't uh, completely designed the crown yet. If we want to hide the minimal thickness indication, we could just do that and that clears up the screen. We have the different sliders here where the default values can be modified. Crown cement spacer is the space between the supporting structure and the crown that's being created in order to insert an adhesive. No cement gap is the area on the bottom of the crown where there is no gap to have a close fit between the crown and supporting substructure. And then we have the other sliders here that can be used to modify and design the lip going around the base of the crown. Minimal thickness is the minimal thickness that the crown is required to be. Otherwise, we'll see that red indication indicating a violation. Once you're satisfied with the base of the crown and you've adjusted any necessary sliders, go ahead and click on next. Here we select the relevant virtual tooth, which we would like to place in order to convert that into the crown. We have several different libraries on the list. You could browse them and select the one that you like the most. Select the relevant tooth by left clicking and the general size, small, medium, or large from the bottom left. And then go ahead and click on OK. In step number five of the process, the software has placed the virtual tooth into the relevant space. We could use the widget to modify uh, the placement, we could see the red indication here indicating that the minimal thickness has been violated. So we could use our editing tools to modify that, or we could just leave, leave the violation and the software will automatically uh, fill in the minimal thickness. The editing tools that we have in terms of resizing 
is we can add remove material as usual shift and left mouse button will add material while control and left mouse button will remove material so we could see that uh, as we add material here the area of the minimal thickness violation disappears for every tool we have the tool size which is the size of the area being affected and the tool strength which how much change happens each time you use the tool so you could use the sliders to modify that we have a smooth tool which could be used to smooth out surfaces and a local deform which allows you to grab and drag or sh and modify and stretch any part of the tooth so it could either be used to modify a very particular section or particular cusp or you can make the tool size much larger grab a much larger area and for example here where we have the violation a quick way of kind of keeping the tooth shape intact and just stretching the tooth in a particular direction to deal with minimal thickness violations. At this step, it's also helpful to know that you could turn on the opposing jaw. You could see how it interacts and uh, touches, even though in the next step, we're actually going to be resolving the collisions. For example, here, we could use our add remove tool, use the shift key or sorry, use the control key to remove a little bit of uh, material if we like, and to deal with some of the contacts. Once we're happy with the shape and design of the tooth, we're going to click next to take us to the next step where we could deal with collisions. We could see on screen that we have this brighter red, which is showing us our collisions and our intersections, and the darker red showing us the minimal thickness violation. So once again, we could use the tools that we have here if we want to modify the shape of the tooth. We have two checkboxes that if we want the software to automatically subtract out occlusal and or proximal intersections, we could just leave the checkboxes checked. The software will do the subtraction to make sure to remove the intersections. If we want to, to solve the issue or modify the tooth design, we could use the editing tools similar to what we had before. So we could add some material Here, over here to, do, to deal with our minimal thickness. We could remove some materials in the area of the intersections. And then we could decide if we want to keep any remaining intersections or if we want the software to automatically subtract them out. Once we're done resolving and dealing with intersections, we click next. We could see here that in the area where there are minimal thickness violations, the software has added some uh, material to make sure there are no minimal thickness violations. But what we could see now is that we now have our custom crown designed. Okay, there's our crown. We still have the ability, if we want to make any modifications to it, to go to the teeth edit panel and use any of the tools for example this global geometry transform where we could just grab and drag any of the nodes to make any mo uh, final modifications to it you could use a smooth tool to polish over areas or to relax particular parts of the mesh we also have some boolean operations which we're not going to demonstrate they're going to now but just so you know that they do exist over here and we could finalize any last changes to our design. Once we're happy with our design, we once again go back to the restoration design panel and click on export. Now export from crown and bridge module is free and it's going to stay free for a long time. So you could export as export design as many crowns as you want. We have the ability to export to the STL file and or the XML configuration file for milling. So the crowns could be Export as an STL for 3D printing. The XML configuration file could be used for milling the crowns. And on this screen, you could decide exactly which surfaces or what you're going to be exporting. What you're going to be exporting. If you're going to be exporting more than one thing, we have the export separated files to a folder that's automatically activated and checked since we're going to be exporting um, multiple items. If for whatever reason you want to export, let's say, two STL files, but have them exported as a single STL file then you could select multiple STL files for export and uncheck the export separated files to a folder button. But that's a bit of a tangent. We're not uh, dealing with that right now. So for our purposes, 
we're going to export the STL file to give us the option for printing. We're going to export the XML configuration file, so we have the option for, for milling, and then we click on the export button. The software asks for the location where you want to save the exported files. I'm going to click on desktop, new folder, uh, export uh, test, and then go ahead and click on OK. When I, when I navigate to the folder on the desktop, I see once again that we have the STL file that's been exported from the software and we have our XML configuration file that could be used for milling. So as I mentioned, exports from Crown and Bridge is completely free. You can do as many crowns as you like, as many bridges as you like, export them, mill them, and or print them.